talk about this and more. Congressman Mike Quigley, Democrat of Illinois, of course, who sits on the House Intelligence Committee. Good morning, sir. Uh, Adam Schiff, the chair of your committee, calls this dangerous and un-American, says it's weaponizing law enforcement against political enemies. Do you agree with Schiff, or is that taking it too far? Oh, I don't think you can take this too far. Uh, the special counsel called what the Russians did a sweeping, systematic assault on our democracy. I think when history looks back, the president's reaction to what the Russians did is far worse. For so far, it's been an assault on the independence and the integrity of law enforcement and the Justice Department. Uh, this is weaponizing them against his political enemies. Uh, this is what autocrats do. Uh, and it's extraordinarily dangerous, and if allowed to, will create a very dangerous precedent for the future. Congressman, just to be clear um, on what you just said, are, are you saying that what the president is doing now is, in your words, quote, far worse than what Russia did to our democracy during the 2016 election? We can inoculate ourselves against what the Russians did. Well, we can educate the public. We can defend ourselves from cyber attacks. What I'm suggesting is uh, a profound change uh, on the, in the ability, the integrity, the independence of the Justice Department and the intelligence community. That will have a longer lasting impact than what the Russians did. What the Russians did was, what, what did Mike Morrell call it, the political equivalent of 9-11. Absolutely. But if presidents are allowed to use law enforcement to go after their political enemies, where does it end? That's a self-inflicted wound, real damage to our democracy. So, so you are, I mean, you are saying it, it is far, oh, far absolutely. worse. Okay. We have to see how this plays out. You believe that it is politically motivated to go against political enemies. I hear you on that. Let me ask you this, though. Of course, there is the irony of the White House fighting to keep so much of the Mueller report underlying evidence, testimony surrounding it from McGahn, etc., uh, secret, hidden, right? And then pushing for full transparency on this front, on the origins of the Russia probe. I get the irony, but I wonder, sir, if there's any risk to Democrats in terms of at least optically pushing against this latest probe by Barr into the origins of the Russian investigation and transparency there while pushing forward on the, on the Mueller report. What do you think? I think it's different things. How did all of this begin? The first notion that the, the President of the United States was going to question the intelligence community uh, or his predecessor was, it was a sad morning some time ago, the president woke up, read something in Breitbart, and accused President Obama of wiretapping Trump Tower. Of course, there was no truth to this. And there was a long string, a litany of accusations, unfounded, unproven by the president, attacking his predecessor and how this investigation began. None of them have borne out. Uh, there have been investigations. Uh, my committee, the Intelligence Committee, is the oversight authority over the intelligence community. We would want to know if there were abuses. Absolutely none have been found. So this is yet another assault using the Justice Department, in reality not just to go after uh, an internal investigation, but to go after his political enemies. And Let so looking back from the big picture, Russia attacked our democracy. Uh, Chairman Nunez at the time from the intelligence community and the President of the United States locked arm and they joined in the fight by attacking the FBI and the entire intelligence community, its own Justice mm. Department. The mm. assault continues. Congressman, let me turn the page uh, and talk about impeachment. You said earlier, uh, you said this in February to the New York Times, that Democrats need to be in your words, quote, patient and practical about impeachment. And I'm wondering if there is anything that has changed in your stance since then. Well, that was before we found out everything about Manafort and Cohen and the right. release of the redacted report. Uh, I think what we have to recall here is, and the speaker's strategy follows the notion that we can count votes in the Senate. And this indeed is a fight for the hearts and minds of the American public. 
simply impeaching the president uh, on the House side isn't going to remove him. That's because right. Because they don't have the votes. So uh, you've, you've got to appreciate this could backfire. We've had two important victories this week in court where the courts recognize the broad sweeping authority of the House to investigate, mm -hmm. uh, especially when uh, we're talking about an obstruction after the fact. But what we're talking about earlier, to me, that's, that moves the needle, and it goes from the president uh, abusing his power uh, in, the, in the manner of obstruction to the president of the United States assaulting and weaponizing the Constitution using the law enforcement power he has. So, uh, look, I think we need to continue to move along the path we have, and I think there'll be continued victories uh, in mm -hmm. the court system. But the mm -hmm. President of the United States, as he moves toward a more dangerous tack, risks putting the House in a position where it has absolutely no choice. Okay. It sounds like you, you're not there yet, but you may be moved there. Let me ask you, in the yes. short amount of time we have left, about something very important, I think, and that is the President just this week raised the possibility of easing, easing restrictions on the Chinese tech giant Huawei as part of an attempt to get a trade deal with China in the very same week that he called Huawei very dangerous for American national security and the U.S. Department of Commerce put Huawei on the trade blacklist. Is that a good idea to go easier on Huawei to get a trade deal with China? It shouldn't be part of a quid pro quo. Uh, China and its security threats and its cyber threats in the United States are very real. It is an existential threat to United States security for a whole variety of reasons. That takes a broad-ranging, systematic approach to mm -hmm. address the Chinese assault. Using it as a bargaining chip without getting to the core of the matter, the broad-ranging issues that we must address when it comes to telecommunication and even rail cars uh, belittles it. Uh, this is something we need to focus on and not throw off as a one-time offer. Okay, Congressman Mike Quigley, I appreciate having you on on all of this. Thank you very much.